All right, as we get into new instruction here, we're going to take a look at manufacturing inventory. We're going to start out taking a look at the manufacturing process. Uh, again, you went through this kind of at, within your paper airplane example. Uh, first thing you're doing, whether you're manufacturing computers or manufacturing ski boards, uh, is you schedule the production. Here's when you're going to do the work. You set up the timeline. Uh, then after you've got the timeline set, you make sure you've got all the direct materials in front of you ready to work on. From that point on, you use your labor and your resources in order to convert the, that raw material into finished goods. I mean, in the end, finished goods is the goal, and then you, fin you store those finished goods somewhere until the, you sell them. Now, here's kind of the detailed breakdown, taking a look at some of these terms and how they fit within our manufacturing inventory accounts. Uh, so some quick definitions, those direct materials or raw materials. Uh, we're talking about e things that are easy to trace, you know, those costs that are easy to trace from the beginning all the way to the final product. We've got our direct labor, so the people who actually manufacture or work on the product. We've got something called manufacturing overhead costs, and this is our applied. It's something that's going to represent our indirect materials, uh, and it's got to be an estimate while we apply it, and we'll get into that more so later on. Uh, and then later on, we compare it to our actual costs. We, we don't find out these actual costs until the end. It's probably not going to equal the applied amount, and that's okay. Uh, we just need to be somewhat close, and we'll adjust for uh, our cost of goods sold uh, for 100% accuracy when it comes down to it. And then we've also got the selling and administrative cost piece. Uh, it represents other costs related to selling the item, but it doesn't impact our, our manufacturing accounts. So let's go ahead and kind of look at the process in manufacturing, and, the, and our buckets down here at the bottom show it. So we've got our purchases, and those go into our raw materials bucket. Well, now, what comes out of the raw materials bucket is whatever we're beginning to work on. Uh, what else is going to go into that work is our direct labor. So our direct labor turns those raw materials, and along with our applied manufacturing overhead, uh, turns those raw materials into work in process. So work in process is where the bulk of our costs end up going. Now, coming out of that work in process, then, is everything we finish. Uh, and then what's going to leave our finished goods is whatever we sell. And we talked about manufacturing overhead could be over or under applied, under, over or under estimated. Applied and estimated are the same term uh, for our, our, our regards here. And so we're either going to decrease or increase, but again, we'll spend more time with that in a couple of days. Not so much now. And then there's also that kind of selling and admin piece, but it doesn't impact us in terms of our inventory accounts. So the main inventory accounts, you can see there at the bottom, raw materials, work in process, finished goods, and cost to get sold. And work in process is the busiest one. So let's take a look at each individually. And sure, there's calculations, but if you understand the flow, you're in great shape. So we're talking about raw materials. Where we begin with an amount of raw materials. That's however much we had at the beginning, and we buy some more. Well, during the year, we start to use those raw materials. So everything that's used will go from raw materials into work and process, and then we end up with our ending raw materials or direct materials, those are synonymous terms, uh, at the end of the period. WIP, again, is going to be the busiest piece. We've got a beginning amount. So you can see that beginning amount down here at the bottom in our, light, in our darker blue shaded cylinder there. Uh, but then what's going to go into that whip? What's going to increase it? Well, we've got that direct material that we use, okay, we start to work on. That direct labor is what we're working on that direct material with. So that's going to increase in our work and process. And then we're going to have some indirect materials. We're going to have some indirect labor. We're going to have some utilities. All that's applied manufacturing overhead. Again, this is an estimate. Spend more time with it later, okay? Uh, but nonetheless, we're going to estimate it and put it in here. And that will give us the cost of our goods in process. During the period, though, we finish some of our cost of goods. So that's the cost of goods manufactured. That heads off to finished goods. And to be honest, that's usually a large portion of that whip. So that little piece that's flying out, definitely not drawn to scale. And we end up with our ending whip inventory. Now we're moving over to finished goods. Again, a little simpler. We've got beginning finished goods. During the period, we add that cost of goods manufactured, so that piece that came over from WIP into here gives us the cost of goods we could have sold during the period. 
We're obviously not going to sell all, but we are going to sell some, and that could be a large portion, again, not drawn to scale. It's going to head off to your cost of goods sold, and we're going to end with our finished goods inventory uh, that remains for the next period. Cost of goods sold then, uh, the calculation, you start out with the beginning cost of goods sold, if there are any. And the first thing you just bring in is you bring in that cost of finished goods that we actually sold from our finished goods bucket. So again, it flows from one to the other. There will be an adjustment for manufacturing overhead under over applied estimated, whatever term you want to use there. Uh, again, we'll deal with that more later. And you end up with your total cost of goods sold for the period. That ends up impacting the income statement. So the big thing to gather is the flow from one bucket to the next, from raw materials to work and process, to all the things that go into work and process, then the flow out of work and process into finished goods, and then from finished goods into cost of goods sold. If you're able to grasp that, you'll do well with this. I want you to try one problem out. Let me know if you have questions while you're going. Good luck.